I mean, obviously, it would be, I would be lying if I said it's the same thing in the last, you know, since I've been to the league. Obviously, different for many reasons, not just basketball wise, but uh, world. So it's definitely different. Um, but the basketball, it's still the basketball game. Um, they go out and have fun and enjoy it. Cool. Thanks, Russ. Yeah. Ava. Hey, Russ. Um, Scott Brooks yesterday shared with us that you kind of grabbed Cassius and, and Danny after practice and with your community event yesterday. Um, why was that important for you to take them with you? I mean, it's important when you get in this league, you need to understand um, how the, the community supports obviously the team, but how important it is to be able to give back um, through, you know, difficult times that we're in and um, obviously they're rookies. So that's the kind of first go around a community event, can't really do community events like we would normally do with the team or um, with players. So I want to make sure that they um, had an opportunity to be able to do something and, and give back to the community. And then um, something else Scott shared with us yesterday, obviously with Rui's injury being out, um, he's been through stretches of time in his career where he's had to sit out before. How important is it for his teammates to kind of tell him to keep his head up around this time? I don't know how much contact you guys can have with him with, you know, all that stuff, but. Um, can you uh, it's, it's important to, you know, during times like this to be able to stick with him, know that we support him, um, continue to instill confidence in him and make sure he's doing, you know, okay. And, uh, you know, we hold it down until he gets back. Thanks, Russ. Yeah. Zach. Hi, Russ. Uh, I'm Zach, the Japanese correspondent for the Wizards. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, buddy. Um, I want to ask about Rui as well. Uh, you might not have uh, seen him much this past week, but what have your interactions with him been like? And what's your impression of him? Our interactions have been fine. Um, you know, Rui was um, on a good path. And uh, I feel like he was moving in a, in a good direction coming into this season. And uh, our interactions have been good, just being able to learn a little bit more about him, uh, his background, his culture, uh, his journey. So it's been, uh, you know, it's been good. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Russ, with, uh, with new players on the team in such a short preseason, what's going to be the key for you guys to get off to a good start in the regular season? Uh, just, I think that for us, uh, it's a long season, man. You always got to realize that a lot of people put a lot of pressure on the start of the season, how it goes, and if that's how it's going to go, because the season is ups and downs. And, the things that may happen that you can't predict. Our job is to make sure mentally we're in the right space. Uh, we give it our best effort, we go out to compete, and that's all you can ask. And for you as a point guard, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a process of learning guys' spots on the floor. Uh, how do you go about that process? Do you kind of just pay attention in practice or is it watching film or asking those guys directly? Combination of all of that um, alongside of it, just having actual dialogue and understanding. Um, you know, where guys like the ball, they understand in my game a little more too. Um, I think it's going to be a, you know, a work in progress for everybody. And as um, long as we all have the same goal in mind, that's winning. You know, that's all that matters. All right, we'll take just a couple more. Neil? Hey, Russell, uh, a non-basketball question for you. If you could just share with us um, something about your kids and your family. I don't know what you mean, share something about them. Okay, I tell you, my wife's name is Nina. My son's name is Noah. My daughter's name is Sky and Jordan. There you go. And I guess, how has the adjustment and move been for them so far? That's all I got for you, Chad. All right, fair enough. <laughs> all right, last question, Brianna. <laughs> hey, Russ. Um, um, so, of course, we've seen all the videos of Kyrie's pregame routines. Um, do you have any specific things that you are doing to prepare yourself before the games, or have you made any changes over the years to your pregame routine? Only thing that's changed in my life is my kids, so I make sure that I uh, spend time with them when I can. But everything else to me is still the same. Um, that we're going to have a, a couple of really good players. I haven't decided. Yeah. Okay. And um, in addition to Rui's, uh, I, I've decided, but I haven't. I've decided not to tell you yet. 
<laughs> Fair enough. Uh, in addition to Rui's eye issue, are there any other injuries you're, you're looking at? Um, mm, no, right? No. Everybody's good other than Rui. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, regardless of, of whether he's starting or not, does Rui's injury, does it make you, or does it give you an opportunity to play Bertans with starters more? Or is are you still looking at, if he doesn't start, are you still looking at rotating him similarly to how you would have otherwise? Well, I, I think he's going to get opportunities. I mean, if he doesn't start tomorrow, there's a chance that he does start. Um, depending on how long Rui's out, that positions obviously uh, could be pretty fluid. Um, but I, I like I like them. I like them. I like them with the starters. Um, you know, he's going to be able to close games um, out, get his his length, his know how to play, his competitive spirit to go along with his shooting. Um, he's definitely going to be able to close games out for us whether I get him the last six or seven minutes of second half with the starters or the last six or seven minutes of the fourth quarter with the starters. I have to figure all that out. And, and do you have, do you have specific thoughts on, on, uh, you know, Russ was um, so dominant last year when they put four shooters around him. Do you have specific thoughts on or theories on, on trying to get as much shooting around him or do you think there are other ways to utilize him as, as effectively? No, I mean, he's, he's a great player. He, he, he can he can help the team uh, move the scoreboard and uh, whoever's on the floor with him uh, that's what that's what he's about um, I mean obviously when you have shooters our team is different uh, we have different uh, philosophy than what they had you know la last year um, but I think you can put you have shooters on the floor with anybody that helps, but you have to have a good mix. We want to be a we want to be a really good two way team. Um, so we have to do a combination of guys that, that sometimes are a better defenders and shooter. And there's going to be some guys that are going to be on the floor that are better shooters and defender. But we need to get a, a pretty good mix. But I think Russell can play with anybody on this team uh, as well as Brad. Zach. Hi, Coach. Hey, Zach. Um, as far as Rui, uh, until last week, I mean, what had stood out to you most about his development going into season two? His, um, I think his, his, his confident level. Uh, you, can just you can just tell that he's been around now uh, the league once, and he, he just came back with a, just a more confident. You can just tell his and the communication on the court and off the court. He's just more relaxed and he's opened up a little bit. His personality is, um, is um, you can see it more. He's not as quiet as he was as a rookie, like a lot of rookies are. I think he, he understands that he's, a, he's gonna be a, a good player in this league for a long time. And I think he has a lot of comfort in knowing that. Uh, but his teammates, you know, his, his teammates love the way he came back. It's unfortunate that uh, he's going to be out the, for some games uh, to start the season, but he's definitely um, prior, you know, prior to the to his eye irritation, he was definitely came back a better player. Thank you. Yep. Ava. I can barely hear you, Ava. Okay. Um, you talked about how you guys would be still putting in pieces of the offense and things like that um, right up until the preseason games. Can you speak a little bit about how much this group is still maybe a work in progress compared to normally this time of year? No, I mean, yes, it's definitely, we have some, some uh, wizard knowledge of guys coming back, but, you know, just as of this morning, we put three special situation um, plays in. Um, normally you would have more time to, to put that in. We had to go over some other things, uh, to make sure the priorities were in place, but we have enough to go in the, the, the first couple of games and we can add 
to it after that. Um, but there's no question you know, we have, we could potentially start, you know, when Rui comes back, you know, uh, a lot of guys under 20 or right at 20 or 21, 22. Uh, so that you just have to be patient and keep working and keep developing. But we have two good leaders that can help, help the group come along even faster than, than a, probably a normal team would with uh, potential three young guys starting. Thank you. Thank you. Quentin. How you doing, coach? Pretty well. What did you see from Anthony Gill in his first start in that last preseason game? And what do you like from from his size and, and his ability to shoot? Just what, what did you assess from his first appearance um, at that spot? He just has like a like a steady hand. He just pretty he's pretty he has like a calming personality game that when you when you throw him out there, you don't have to to worry about him, you know, trying to do too much uh, and making um, mistakes. And when you come in as a role player, that's what you want. If you can do that consistently, you can be a star in that role. But I think he, he has the potential to be a star in his role. And he probably won't play a lot of minutes. But when you do throw him in, you know you're going to get a, a steady hand, a real consistent performer. And he didn't make his shots uh, last game, but he's, he's a shot maker. Uh, he doesn't have to create. All he has to do is just be ready to catch and shoot with some of the guys that potentially he can play with. But I like what he brings. He brings the toughness. He brings uh, a great spirit to our team. He works. He comes in. He's one of the first guys on the court. He's always working with our coaches, our younger players, and he, he understands that that's his role right now. He has to, you know, Sometimes you gotta to, to fit in to 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 have a role, and I think he's done that really, really well. It's probably as good as I've seen any player that in his position that really come in and, and, and accept that and, and play play that role very well. Appreciate it, coach. You're welcome. All right, last question from Da. Hey, Scott. Um, Sorry, I jumped on a little late, but um, if you've been asked this, I apologize. But in no your worries. view, what would a successful season with Russell look like this year? Well, I mean, playoffs. We got a, we got a, we got a good team. That's we have a good. We've added some good players. I mean, Russell is his ability to to lead a team um, and get a team better. It's 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 pretty. He has a track record of that. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously things don't have to go our way. You know, we're fighting it. Uh, obviously, the whole league is fighting COVID, as the whole world is, and that's that's obviously a factor. We got it. We can't relax on, in that that in that regard. But injuries, we got to do a. You know, we got to get lucky and there. You know, we started off with Rui out, which is not great, but we got some guys that are going to step up. I think Russell's biggest um, the thing that I've noticed about Russell this time around uh, is that you can just tell he just has a really uh, good sense of what needs to be done and he knows how to do it. And I'm sure that goes with, with uh, his family, you know, being a father, you, you have to have patience. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know it's funny that like I said earlier we we could potentially start a bunch of young players and he's going to have to have patience uh like like I've had some patience before um with, with coaching a young group but I think he has that he understands that and I just I just like his professionalism and his ability to relate to the players and teach the players uh, and they listen. They listen because of what he's accomplished and what he's about, and he does it. He's not one guy that's not going to do it. He's going he's gonna to come to the gym early. He's going to stay uh, late, and he's going to help the young guys. He's going to help the veteran guys. He's the, he doesn't pick and choose his teammates. He, he likes them all, and, he, and I think that's a big – there's no clicks with him. He likes uh, all 15 guys plus the two two-ways. For sure. I sent Keontae a personal message uh, not too long ago. Uh, but, you know, it's it's big time to, to be able to do what he's doing. Um, you know, it takes courage, it takes passion and, and fight, you know, and the whole world was behind him. The whole everybody was supporting him. 
and uh you know it's a beautiful blessing it's a you know it's it's another another step in life man he, he's blessed with another opportunity so you know the biggest thing is making sure that he's okay he's healthy you know and just take it a day at a time and a step at a time from here on out so it's a blessing for the florida family for his family uh and for the whole country for sure appreciate you p yeah fred hey brad you ever done media from an airplane before yes well, that was probably not on not on zoom but yes yeah. um I'm wondering, last year, you said going into the year, your goal was to make the playoffs. You said after the year that one of your goals coming in was to average 30. Um, do you have similar goals or, or other goals that you're, that you're looking to this year? I said last year I wanted to average 30. You said after you finished with 30 that one of your goals coming in was to average 30. Or maybe Drew Hanlon said that. Yeah, I don't think I said that. I said my my goal going into last year, a personal goal of mine was to average 30. I don't think I publicly said that. Uh, but Drew and I, we definitely questioned whether or not that was that was a, a possibility. And uh, granted, it was a blessing that I was able to. But this year, that's not. I'm not going to sit here and say that's a goal of mine. Um, it's not at all because I feel like I don't have to prove that I can score. You know, I don't. I don't think I have to prove that. Um, more or less, and I won't have to carry that much of a load this year either, uh, especially with we have Russ and then having DB back and having our guys healthy. There won't be a need for me to do that on a nightly basis. So uh, I'll definitely have my, my spurts of where I may have them, and I'll be aggressive every single night, and Russ pushes me every single day to make sure I do that. Uh, but I'm not going out here chucking up shots trying to get 30 a night. Uh, the biggest thing for me is getting better every day uh improving my my defense i'm always going to say that that's, that's probably the only thing i'm really more or less focused on is being a complete two-way player and uh and doing whatever it takes to help my team win and get into the playoffs i want to win you know whatever it looks like whatever it takes did you did you feel like uh the offensive load that you had last year contributed to not being able to go as hard in other aspects of the game defense uh, off ball, that kind of stuff no uh, yes and no uh i i factor in a lot of slacking on the defensive end, I guess, in terms uh, to a lot of stuff. I mean, we were crappy as a team defensively. And when we're crappy as a team and we're not good individually, you know, it doesn't, it's just a domino effect. So uh, I would say my individual defense was okay. I would say my help side was terrible. My transition was terrible. And I guess probably a lot of times, maybe my body language on the defensive end was terrible. Um, but there's no excuse for me for me to have the lax or the slip ups that I had. Um, so that that's definitely been a, a focus of mine this year though. Chris Miller. What up, B? What up, C? Um, can you describe what shared experience means maybe off the floor with a teammate that actually happens on the court that actually happens for teams to get better? Like if you've got a shared experience with with somebody. How much does that help be a productive teammate, I guess? Uh, I don't know if I put a lot of stock into that because I, I would say experience in itself. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say shared experience. Granted, the camaraderie you build in that is, uh, is second to none. You know, it's, it's always better that way. But I always feel like you can teach and you can you can mentor the game, you know, through your own experience, especially like to younger guys. Like, you know, you can pretty much teach them and try to show them and you can tell them, you know, what to do, you know, how the game will go, how the game will grow, how it'll slow down for them in that sense, you know, and, and not necessarily have to play with them. Like you can be an older vet on a team and don't get any burn. And yet you're instilling all this knowledge into a younger player who does and who's kind of thrown into the fire. So uh, I think it's twofold. Uh, I, I'm, I, I hear what you're saying on that. I, I'm kind of 50, 50 on it. Like I do believe that you, you have to get on the floor together. You have to be able to bond. You have to be able to, you know, share some type of experience together to be able to get that down. Uh, but at the same time, I don't put heavy stock into that, you know, because it's it's adaptability on everybody's part. One question on Philly. Um, they've made some additions by putting some shooting around Ben and Joel. How much did you take away from those two preseason games in terms of your film study? Um. A lot. We know that they, they they still are kind of a slow-paced team, so we want to speed them up and try to get them to play a little bit faster. 
Uh, but, you know, they're still a threat. You know, they added Danny Green, uh, champion, three-point shooter. And, you know, Seth Curry is one of the best. I think he had the highest three-point percentage last year out of everyone shooting the ball. So, it's uh, we got our hands full. You know, they have a big fella down low who can give you a bucket. And he can step outside, too. So, he's very versatile. Uh, and they got size, you know. So, I like, I like how they put their team together. But, you know, we, we love challenges. And. I love the way we're put together too. So appreciate it. I'll take just a few more. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, what do you think of potential for the offense this year? Because it seems like you guys have threats in all three levels at this point. Oh, 100%. Uh, I'm not sure where we finished that in offense last year, but, you know, given how shorthanded we were at times and, you know, the mixed lineups we had, I mean, we were, that was never a problem. You know, that was, offense was never a problem. And I think this year it's going to even, I think we can score over 115, 120 points a night. So, you know, we have that ability. And like you said, we can score at all three levels. So that's that's never the problem. That's not the issue for us, you know, and it'll never be the issue. It's, it's what we do on the defensive end collectively. And um, this may be a dumb question, but what's this logo we're looking at that's on your background and your mask? Is that uh, your logo, and did you design it? It's my logo, yes. Uh, did not design it, but it is my new logo, yes. Very cool. Thank you. Zach? Hey, Brad, good to see you. Um, I want to ask about Rui. Uh, it must be frustrating as a young player in the middle of his development to miss time like this. Uh, what's the kind of mindset he needs to maintain while he's out? Well, being a young player, when I first came into the league, I didn't play a lot of games my first, what, four or five years in the league, either due to injury and due to, like, unfortunate out-of-my-control circumstances. So, you know, the best you can do is keep your head straight up, lift your head because don't, don't fall into the, the trap of being injury prone or being labeled like you can't stay on the floor. You know, a lot of unfortunate things happen to Rui. Uh, we know how hard he works. You know, that's never in question. His work ethic and everything he puts into the game, his love and his passion for it. Nobody questions that, you know. Obviously, we want him on the floor. We want him healthy. But, you know, making sure he's 100% is the first and, and the biggest concern. And your health is always, you know, your body is your temple. You know, your body is the reason why you can play the game. So if that's not right, you know, by all means, take your time and get it right. So uh, he'll be fine. Just continue to stay confident, stay stay in film, continue to figure out ways to continue to grow your game. You know, you can grow it in multiple facets. You know, it doesn't have to just strictly be on the court. It could be off the court, too. So uh, he'll be fine. We got He has great vets he can lean on to, to be able to get him through. All right, last question from Neil. Hey, Brad, uh, you know, the media and fans, I would say, you know, talk a lot about expectations. So I'm curious, do players think about that as well? And then also, secondly, is it difficult, if not impossible, to talk about playoff expectations when that's still so far away? Yeah, uh, I answer the playoff one. Yeah, that's, that's always a tough one because every it's only what, well, I guess, what, 10 spots now, but there's only only eight teams get in. So, you know, you kind of have to figure out, you know, who those eight are going to be. And, you know, there's there's hungry teams out here. That everybody wants to get in. Fifteen teams want to get in. So, you know, it's, it's do or die. So it's always tough to kind of pinpoint, you know, what your expectations are. You don't know how the year is going to go. It's a crazy year we have from the get-go already. So, you know, it's never – it's always crazy to kind of pinpoint the playoffs. But, you know, everyone has expectations. Everyone's going to have you know, goals and expectations for them teams and for themselves. Uh, and for us personally, we still have them. You know, we got to – our biggest thing is make sure we stay healthy and uh, and competing every single night, which hasn't been a problem so far.